Nikki Mitchell. I'm one of the pulmonary critical care physicians here at Riverside University Health System. Um, in going through our preparation for this pandemic, we have clearly been taking a lot of ideas from uh, other countries and what they've done to adapt to this. Um, one of the things I saw online that I thought was very unique and potentially very beneficial is this acrylic uh, intubation box. So I brought a picture of it to our plan ops guy and they were able to make a box relatively quickly overnight and uh, they had their first prototype for us. They brought it up the next day and we had all the people that intubate essentially from the different departments come try it out. So anesthesia, ER and pulmonary critical care. We are, as you would expect, varying sizes. So one of the people in my department is about six foot three, I'm five foot two. And I thought that that would make it difficult for us to have the holes for the intubator at the same place. Um, but when we ended up trying it out, it ended up working well. Um, the initial box that we saw didn't have holes on the side for the respiratory therapist. But when we tried to dry run it, we thought it would be better to have a hole on one side and then to adapt to the bed, which is potentially either way, to give us better protection, we did get a 1015 drape from the OR and put it across. And that way, the side that the respiratory therapist is gonna be on is able to be pulled back and the other one is still covered, maintaining containment of the aerosolization. Um, we know that a lot of the data out there says we should be using video laryngoscope for intubation. And so this allows you to bring the video laryngoscope, the blade underneath the box while still maintaining a screen outside with the respiratory therapist on the opposite end uh, able to bag while you do all your manipulation. The height of the box, while it seems very high, it is appropriate for the size of someone's head with a bag or room for manipulation of an endotracheal tube if needed. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Marty Starnes. Uh, I work for uh, hospital plan operations. Um, Dr. Nikki was Approached, uh, approached me to ask me to build the box. I was the one that came up with uh, our UHS's design. Uh, it's a very simple design. It uh, consists of basically two pieces. Um, it's a clear acrylic sheet plastic. Um, it's uh, approximately 20 inches tall by 22 inches wide by 20 inches deep. Uh, so the original design had two hand holes in the back. Uh, they're approximately four inches apart, uh, just above center, and they're five and a half inches in diameter each. Uh, the team then requested that we put one on each side, left and right side of the box uh, for bagging. And um, those are also put just above center line and are also five and a half inches in diameter. The thing that we did differently, and mainly for uh, cleaning purposes, is, is we actually heated up the plastic and bent the sides down. And then that also made it more durable. They were very impressed and other than the two holes on the side, everything else was, was working perfectly for them. When we tried this and we have not used it on a live person that is needed to be urgently intubated from having a life person lay in there and mimic a true intubation, we found it all very useful and easy to use. It wasn't something that I thought that in an emergent situation, I wouldn't be able to adapt to. It seems very natural um, adjustment to make in that acute situation. So one of the reasons we thought it was necessary to spend time and energy on building this box is we know that we have increased aerosolization with positive pressure bagging and intubation. It's one of the highest risk um, procedures that we do on COVID positive patients uh, throughout the hospital because we know that it is an airborne virus that can carry far, especially with positive pressure ventilation. So this is giving us one more line of protection for those of us to intubate to hopefully prevent any of our healthcare workers from getting sick. It also maintains all of the aerosolization in the box to prevent the respiratory therapists and then later the nurses that walk into the room from having any aerosolized uh, coronavirus.